Hello and welcome to this week's look at action and stunts on film and television. How are you? Thanks for joining me once again. Uh, initially, I must apologise for any background noise you may hear, but my neighbours have decided that construction must continue on their home uh, and uh, they're not letting up, I'm afraid. Scaffolding and various other bits and pieces of equipment are being used. So if you do hear anything, just kind of ignore it. I'm not going to wash it out. We'll just carry on as we are. Uh, if you have listened to the podcast this week, you will know that we are celebrating the uh, British Stunt Register. They are 50 years old and uh, they have brought out their anniversary edition. You can see that they're celebrating 50 years of the British Stunt Register. Now, it's appropriate, I think, at this point to mention that I have been accused this week uh, of bias um, to the register itself on the basis that the argument is that they're not 50 years old. They are a new organisation that have taken over the mantle of a previous one. And I wanted to clarify this because I don't really think there's a great deal of argument there it's very much a case of a register having been in place since 1973 it has taken on a number of mantles along the way uh, JISC and Spotlight over the years and became the British Stunt Register in 2017 but all those members contained with on it apart from those who chose to leave are still those same individuals that were there at the very beginning. So the idea of celebrating an anniversary doesn't seem out of the ordinary. 50 years of anything, uh, particularly when it's one that is providing a service for the movie and television industry, has to be celebrated in one way or another. The fact that there are politics, there's politics within that group, uh, that certain individuals don't find terribly appealing and consequently have left because of it. Now, that is uh, something that they need to continue to challenge should they feel strongly enough about it. But it isn't something that I am in a position to dwell on. Um, and there is no bias involved. I mean, regardless of whether you are a member of this particular register or not, and the rulings changed in 2017. If you remember, we have discussed this before, that up until that time, in order for you to be on the register, obviously you needed to qualify at your disciplines, but also, and, and often considered by many the most complicated part of any uh, item of, of joining the register, was to obtain an equity card and be an actor. Um you don't have to do that anymore. You no longer have to have an equity card and you no longer um, have to be part of this register to be considered a fully-fledged stunt performer, a coordinator, or indeed work in film or television. So there have been changes, and those changes are brought upon by individuals within that organisation. Uh, they made a decision in 2017 to split and become the BSR, the British Stunt Register, as we know it today. Um, and members from those original teams, uh, Spotlight Register and the JSC one, all of that, the majority of them moved over and some didn't. And uh, those individuals are working today uh, as stunt performers and uh, are working very successfully under their own right. But I don't think that any change as far as my presentation of this is concerned would make any difference to that. Predominantly, the reason that we're celebrating it is because there has been something in place, regardless of whether it's the same organisation or not, for 50 years it outweighs a great many uh, of other organisations around the world who have um, organisations, yeah, groups possibly, um, organisations and groups that have taken on a mantle 
and a position of. within their own organisations, their own business. I, I'm reminded particularly of uh, Stunts Unlimited, uh, which, of course, is an American organisation uh, founded upon back by uh, Hal Needham back in the day. And most importantly, over time, members of these organisations around the world have looked at the British system, whether it works for them or not, but they've looked at the basic structure of the British system, which involves qualification, which involves an ability to move on to further areas, and have said, well, that may well work for us. Let's look at doing that. And slowly but surely, there has become a way of not limiting, but making very specific requirements to, to individuals in order for them to do the job they want to do. Um, Australia, New Zealand, two very good examples of systems whereby um, they have then looked at this system and thought, right, we can definitely do this. Because around the world, regardless of where it was, there was a situation whereby up until that point... You know, you turned up on a film set. You may have turned up on a film set. You may have met somebody who was a friend of a friend. And they knew that, oh, you were pretty good on a motorbike. And you rode horses. And, uh, you know, you were kind of knockabout sort of character. And also, you're not that million. You're not a million miles away from, from this guy here, this actor. And they're looking for a double and they're struggling at the moment. So why don't you come down and, and speak to the stunt coordinator and we'll work out some options. And on the basis of that, over time, you then got more work and went back and got to know so-and-so who knew someone. And then you on and on and on. And it, it rolled, you know, it continued to roll on very much later down the line. And I'm still not entirely convinced that the American system has a qualification structure yet, but it's based on experience, definitely. But further down the line, it became very apparent from the British system that things would have to change. Um, Bridge Too Far is a very good example of a film that would be a joint business op with not only the Brits... Uh, Alf Joint was the coordinator, his assistant was Vic Armstrong, but they were filming in Holland. And therefore, on the basis of the amount of individuals that were available and the amount of individuals that they needed to get that job done, they needed to bring in Dutch performers. Well, this guy is a Dutch performer. And in this instance, we're, we're, we'll use Dickie Beer as an example. He was brought in. Um, and was very familiar with the Dutch stunt system and said, well, th these guys are very good. You should bring these guys in and we work with your people. And over time, and based around that particular, what was that, 1977, was it? 76, 77, Bridge Too Far? Then they decided that, well, this guy would be actually very, very good to us, but we can't just sign him up. He needs to be able to have ticked a number of boxes first. And so the, Dickie remembers, and Vic remembers this too, going through qualifications, going through experience and saying, well, you've got this and you've got that, and, and that's a good way of looking at stuff, and, and we particularly need you to look at this. And you fill, you fill the criteria. And then before too long, that's what was put in place. So it was the early 80s, probably, I would have thought, when that was finally put into some sort of system uh, whereby there was a need for qualifications along the way and things changed. Now, the celebration of this particular anniversary is important. It's important because it gives us an opportunity to reflect. Reflect on those individuals who were there at the very beginning who gave individuals of any nature, regardless of whether they're on, they stayed on the register or whether they went their separate ways, it gave them an opportunity to become stunt performers. And in that very first book, um, way back before an official register came into place, 
Um, there are some terrific names, some that are still around today, some sadly that are no longer with us, and some that were only there for a very brief period of time before moving on elsewhere. But they left a lasting mark. Um, it's also important to talk about the differences that have happened throughout the years. Um, it is to say that, for instance, uh, most recently everybody has been has been talking about um, the lack of black stunt performers. And, of course, throughout the 70s, there was always the issues with the American system whereby they had to have an organization called the Black Stuntmen's Association to accommodate um, actors who needed to be doubled, but up until that point were being doubled by white stunt performers. And so, from a British perspective, we had, in 1976, the first black stunt performer, a gentleman called Clive Curtis. Uh, Clive, you will have known in many, many films over the years. If you're a Bond fan, uh, you will have spotted him on a number of occasions. Firstly, um, as one of the guys, he's next to Tim Condren uh, in Spain. It's actually Greece, but it's Spain uh, on the, uh, in the picture. Uh, in For Your Eyes Only, Bond is ambushed by two guards. Clive is one, and Tim Condren is the other before being taken to uh, Gonzalez Pool before he is shot by Molina. And also, you will know him from uh, A View to a Kill, uh, the moment where Grace Jones makes her way out onto the edge of the Eiffel Tower, going out before she makes the jump. That's all Clive climbing along that and getting all out into the far side. Now, that was 1976. And back then, they thought, well, you know, here we are doing doing some good we managed to find a black stunt performer um and the argument later down the line was that well why why weren't there more of them you can't just make people be stunt performers if they don't want to do it they won't do it and clive was on his own from 1976 until 1987 that's a very very long time to wait uh, before the next stunt performer came along, who was Mark Anthony Newman. And uh, that was a long time to wait. So, you know, in a, in a fairly long period of time, it was practically just the two of them. So things have moved on. You know, there has been a great deal of change that's happened along the way. Um, there are more women on the stunt register now than have ever been before. And uh, there are some names in this first book um, that you'll see that are, you know, still around today. Um, some in a working capacity, some not in a working capacity, but uh, they are still with us. And they are all trailblazers, you know, based on the work that they did back then and the way that they have changed action forever. And this is not just from, again, from a British perspective, but the eyes of the world have seen what can happen and what will happen as far as the system is concerned. And it's uh, certainly for change along the way. Change will happen all of the time. But the basis of that is that you have a book, and that book uh, contains all of those registered performers within the British system. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have a little look at some of those early names and have a brief run through of some of the bits and pieces and uh, remind you of some of those great faces that we may have seen over the years. Here we go. So let's start with the article written in the Times from 1973 when the register became a reality. Here's the article from the Sunday Times, January 28th, 1978. It's called Stunts Incorporated. At a closed meeting in London last week, the nation's stuntmen got together and opened a register, the chief aim of which is to secure insurance cover. Strange way to make a living, we thought, and went along to the Prince of Wales Feathers in Warren Street, where we discovered some of the stuntmen occasionally gather and drink their fresh orange juice. 
we found Jerry Crampton, very much the king of the trade, his droll old pal Joe Dunn, who's a great deal funnier than the many of the stars he doubles for, and Sid Child, a judo champion, and the muscle behind television's Mrs. Emma Peel. They're a handsome trio, which is what we said to them. And Jerry Crampton said, What do you expect, cauliflower ears and squash noses? Insurance is clearly prudent for anybody going for scraps with Sean Connery and John Wayne and jumping through fifth-floor windows. But, as Jerry Crampton said, at the top end of the trade, where some make £10,000 a year, they have their own insurance and don't need the unions. And, in any case, you might be talking risks, but they're calculated. Nobody respects you for a stunt that's very likely to kill you. People like Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas know a real stuntman when they see one, and they don't want to work with any amateurs who can't calculate a risk. It's a matter of being a technician, knowing just what you can and can't be done. Our trio in the picture often work together, well, said Sid Child, would you stand in the middle of the road and let somebody you don't know drive a car at you? And when you ask them if they ever get hurt, they say no. But that's not counting leopard claws on your back and trivialities like smashed ribs. But their pal Jack Cooper, who's dived 78 feet into water and 78 feet onto cardboard boxes, he prefers the boxes, tells us what he did once got a nasty whack. He had to do a 45-foot fall and some mattresses had been prepared. Nightfall interrupted shooting and then resumed first thing the following morning. Unhappily, the mattresses were of straw and got wet and froze overnight which was how he got this nasty whack in the first place. Some of the great covers there of registers gone by, spotlight ones and the BSR ones. This is the pre-register. Dave Griffiths, actor, carry-on cabbie he was in. Ken Howard, bit part actor back then. The great Frank Henson, wonderful stuntman. Veronica Griffiths, she was a bit park actor, occasional stunts on her. Uh, Alan Peters, actor and musician. Big Georgie Fisher, fabulous stuntman, worked on many, many pictures. Ray Ford, another great man, horseman. Reg Harding, many, many films to his credit, including Richard Graydon. Alf Joint. Some big names that were around for a long time. Frank Mayer, another wonderful performer. Alan Gold, of course, a stuntman from the early 50s and 60s. Nick Hobbs, always in some sort of sporting attire. Robert Murphy, he was an extra and a heavy. Val Mazzetti, of course, was a wonderful motor racer. Mo Kiki was an Adam Adamant fighter ranger, a driver and Doctor Who. Uh, David Newman. Another bit part man. Dorothy Ann Ford. Of course, a wonderful performer. Peter Munt, horseman. Great horseman. Rick Lester, good stuntman too. John Gallant, Benny Hill, Flash Gordon, a couple of Bonds. Terry Maidment, lots of television and film work over the years. Tex Fuller was a Norman Wisdom's stunt double for quite some time. Arthur Howell was a fine fencer. Alfred Hines, familiar face, often played a heavy. What Martin Grace, in fine shape there. The fabulous Bronco McLaughlin, a wonderful Aaron Sweater. Jenny Lefray, doubled uh, Corinne Dore in you ended twice. John Sullivan, another great uh, stuntman, stunt coordinator. Mike Horsborough, fabulous horseman. Romo Guerrera, good f judo man. Max Faulkner, another fine actor and uh, stuntman. Roberta Gibbs was the body in the Thames at the start of Frenzy. Jimmy Lodge, the man who got Vic Armstrong involved in the business. Dougie Robinson, wonderful judo man. Frank Hayden, Lawrence of Arabia from Rushwood Love, did a lot of stuff there. Anne Munt, of course married to Peter. Alfred Hall qualified for the register but appeared mostly as an extra. 
Reuben Martin was a strong man, appeared in many pictures. Rusty Hood, Casino Royale, You Only Live Twice, did it all there. Mark McBride, great stuff, man. Robert McChrystal, Avengers, TV movies. Stuart Fell, started out with Derek Ware, of course. Georgie Leach, one of the greats with Bob Simmons. Eddie Powell, great names. Billy Morgan, everybody knows Billy Morgan. Fred Haggerty, played Grilenko in From Russia Would Love. Royston Farrell was a gymnast and fencer. Billy Horrigan, another fine stuntman. Billy Dean was a good swimmer and horseman. Reg Dent was a horseman as well. If you didn't ride a horse, you didn't get in often. The wonderful Sid Child, the judo queen. Pam Devereaux, another name from the past there, another horse girl. Steve Emerson, heavy, fight man. Rupert Evans, great man with a foil. Jerry Crampton. Del Baker. Look at that for a parting. Billy Cornelius. Another great name from the past. Mark Boyle. Bill Cummings. No Bill from the Bond pictures. The fabulous Gillian Aldham. Look at that. She was a model, you know. You'd never know from that. Tracy Edden. Look at her. How lovely. Dennis Blake. Carry On Movies, the great Peter Diamond, stunt arranger on Raiders of the Lost Ark. Steve James, another fine stuntman in the day. Jim Dowdle, still going today. Mickey Dillon was a great jockey, fine horseman. Jack Cooper, wonderful all-rounder. Bernard Barnsley, another fine horseman. Morris Bush, Boxer who won 12 of his 24 fights in the 50s. Spencer Churchill, bodybuilder and an extra. Brian Bowes, another excellent horseman. Max Diamond, fencer, horseman. George Lane Cooper, big George. Vic Armstrong, whatever happened to him? I wonder... Bob Anderson, the great Bob Anderson. It was Darth Vader in that big fight, of course. Dave Brandon, another wonderful stuntman. Bob Simmons, of course. Where would we be without him? Eddie Eden. Married to Sadie. Leslie Crawford, Roger Moore's double for many years. John Dent, another horseman. James Boyce. One opportunity, Knox, believe it or not, in 72, were doing a fight routine. Dave Black was a motorcyclist. Joe Dunn was, well, another all-rounder, to be fair. Mike Douglas was an actor. Got into the acting game again. Cliff Diggins could do no wrong. Fabulous Cliff. Jeff Silk, Sweeney, Superman 2, another good motorcyclist. The great Roy Alon, God love him. Shirley Dent, another member of the Dent family. Tim Condren, Ireland's finest. Look at him. Great man, Tim. Alan Shunts was part of Derek Ware's Havoc organisation. Barry de Bourle was a horseman. Wonderful Peter Brace. He was a horseman too. Did some great jousting. The fabulous Peter Braham. Looking very suave in that photo. Bob Bryan was an actor. Laurie Boynton was an actor as well. There she is. Sadie Eden. How lovely. And Sue Crossland. So if you do the maths, tot them all up, we've uh, 386 male and female stunt performers and coordinators throughout this anniversary edition. So over the 50 years, and there are still people on this register now who were there at the very beginning but uh, just goes to show you that that's not many 386 is not a lot but that's it for now back in 50 years time so there we go uh plenty of great faces there um some uh, good to see many of them again and of course throughout the years many of them continuing um 
and making change you know making a difference but uh, it's uh, it's important to remember that without all of these individuals regardless again of whether they are on that register now or have been on that register if they are involved in film and television action then they have made a difference and uh, that's the most important thing to remember so um, I sincerely hope that um, any claims in my direction as far as bias are concerned they aren't true in that respect but you know we're, we're trying to make a point that Many of those, all of those individuals, in fact, will have started out in a book like this, a registered book, and then they've gone off and done their own thing, and they're entitled to do that. So uh, let's uh, let's see what the future brings for British action and the stunt business. Until next time, it's bye for now. <laughs>